How's it going everyone? Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca aka Dr. Calcano and it's been a while since I did one of these vlog slash update videos. I'm here at work. It's early in the morning and uh, starting off in the family medicine clinic. We'll do that for half the day. Then after I'm going to the long-term care, the old folks home afterwards to see my patients there. And then I'm going to do a lot of studying tonight in preparation for my OB all night shift tomorrow night. So a lot going on and that will take you along with me. So I don't think I've ever checked in with you guys about this before, but this is the family medicine practice that I've been at since starting residency now. This isn't my office per se, but I, I do see people here for the most part. And it's been really, really nice since starting here. I, you get to be with one preceptor for family medicine. This is like your go-to preceptor throughout the entire two years. So it's been really nice to be in one place and have the patients know you and you know them. And I've some of my own patients that, that request to see me now, which is really, really cool as well. And uh, I think I told you in a previous video, but it's an integrated program. So what that means is even though I'm on obstetrics and gynecology right now, I help catch babies, I help do obstetrical care as well. Um, I'm also responsible for seeing my patients here in the family medicine office. And the split right now is normally about two or three days in office here and then the rest of the days at the hospital or at the gynecology clinic. In terms of where we're at right now and progression through residency, it's really, it's really nice. I'm working on a few different things and I think that when you first start off, like the first half of the first year um, in residency was me trying to get comfortable with seeing people and common concerns and family medicine and uh, doing a lot of longitudinal care as well and preventative care. Um, and, and now that I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with all of this stuff and I feel like my treatment has gotten really, really good, not to, to pump myself up too much here, but I feel pretty confident with the treatment that I'm uh, advising with people. But I want to try and see people a little bit quicker. And you start off, the first milestone that you have to do as a resident is to see about one patient every half an hour. But if you are going to be a family doctor, you can't afford to see one patient every half an hour. Most likely for myself, after talking to a few people on the other side of residency, I am going to try to hold a practice of about 2,000 patients. I know that sounds like a lot, and in many cases it might be above average, but it seems like a good number for this area. There are so many people that need family doctors in this area. And, and I know a lot of people, you, you ask why would you fill up your practice so much? And it's rock and a hard place, right? If you're a doctor, you have all these people in your community that are without family doctors. You want to take as many people as possible because if not, no one is going to see them. So it's in your best interest to, in residency, at least for me, push yourself to learn how to handle that patient load in terms of paperwork and being able to see people and still being able to provide amazing care um, as best as you can. And that's where we're at right now. I'm currently trying to do about three patients per hour. So it's about 20 minutes per person that I'll spend with people. And sometimes even pushing for that four patients per hour if I had a visit that didn't take the full 20 minutes. So maybe some of you know this already because you might have seen one of my posts on Instagram, but um, I do work at the long-term care, the retirement home per se, um, twice a week. And I have about 35 patients there that I see with my preceptor. And uh, I really do like working with the, the older people. And I think that this work in particular is, is pretty... It's pretty rewarding sometimes even just to go in there and talk to some people that uh, you know they really don't have a lot going on and many of them have advanced cognitive decline and dementia but in any case uh, the story of Dr. John I everyone here calls me Dr. John now all the nursing staff all the admin staff the patients and the reason was was because many of my patients with advanced dementia couldn't remember Dr. Calcano they definitely couldn't remember you know Dr. Gianluca or even just Gianluca so we tried Dr. G for a little bit and that didn't work and then it just became Dr. Dr. John and ever since then everyone here started calling me Dr. John and at this point it might be a little too late to go back but uh, it was only a problem because I started seeing notes that were addressed from staff to Dr. John and I, I didn't even recognize it was for me I was wondering who this Dr. John was but uh, that, that's the story and uh, anyways just finished seeing my patients at the long-term uh, long-term care unit for the day.
so just going to share a few little updates now for anyone that wants to stay in the loop with residency and how it's all going. We're coming up to almost the end of my first year right now. I just got a few months left. Come July, it will officially have been the end of my first year. And I'm still on OB. It was a four month rotation, but it ends tomorrow. Tomorrow will be my last shift um, on labor and delivery and the night shifts. So it'll be overnight. Uh, outside of that, on the other side, I'm going to be doing two months of internal medicine, which is next. And then after that, I'm going to be doing two months of my rural rotation, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm moving to Wyerton for two months. So that'll be all of July and all of August. Wyerton, for anyone that doesn't know, is a relatively rural community. It's about three hours-ish north of Toronto. And uh, I'm really excited about that because I'm going to be doing family medicine shifts and emergency shifts. And I think there's also room for a little bit of OB as well. So it's really the full scope of family practice. And I think it'll be a really great way just to bring together everything that I learned in my first year. Okay, and then quick talk about step three. Uh, step three is happening. When exactly, I don't know, but I'm very slowly easing into studying right now. It would be nice if I could get step three done, the American USMLE step three, before I write my graduating residency exam at the end of next year. So ideally, if I could study this summer and be able to write step three in like September or October, that, that might be what I'm aiming for right now. But more to that to come. Uh, we're just moving through the question banks very, very slowly right now. So here's the thing, I'd love to take you guys around the hospital and like show you what a shift is like. I've thought about how I'm gonna do it a few times, but there's two problems. And the first of which being that being a resident, when the shift starts, it's eight tonight to eight the next morning. And sometimes we stay for an hour or a little bit longer afterwards as well. Um, it's It gets really, really busy. And I, number one, even if I was able to, don't know how I would feel and the patients definitely wouldn't want to be videotaped when they're on labor and delivery. So uh, I I'm, I'm sorry, I wish I could show you guys what's going on here because it's awesome. And the OB team here is amazing. And uh, I, I loved delivering babies and helping out uh, here on OB. I thought it was a great four month rotation and I'm really glad that the program kind of had this as like a mandatory part. Um, I had a lot of fun here and I think that doing women's health for the last four months was something that I was really, like I really wanted to have that basic training um, because I think that's like a really important part of the job and personal pet peeve of mine was seeing other doctors that weren't well trained in women's health and uh, it's like 50% of the population. So I really wanted to make sure that the, my ability to handle women's health issues was gonna be like top notch moving forward. Being totally honest, I being here, I had thought to myself that I, I would love to do labor and delivery as part of my job being a family doctor and I'm still very open to that right now. The biggest hang up that I had was the scheduling really, really sucks sometimes. And some of the family doctors that do it have to be on 24 seven call. And I've tried that and it's difficult. The job is incredibly rewarding. I got to be present at some really amazing moments in my patients' lives and that's, that's amazing. But uh, being woken up at like two in the morning and having to drive down to the hospital on any given day without even knowing that you're going to be on call necessarily for that weekend, um, big respect to all the doctors that do it. And um, I, I guess we'll see where everything lies, right? Uh, with my career in the future, but I definitely want to come back in here. Hopefully we'll try and do a labor and delivery shift once every month or once every two months, just to stay current and uh, to keep learning more things as well. For today's shift anyways, it starts in, in a little bit. I got here a little bit early just so I could film, but I'll go upstairs. We'll do our handover, we'll look at the board, we'll see who here is admitted from the day and is currently in labor. And I'll go introduce myself to them. Uh, and then we'll go in together with the OPs as well. Hopefully catch a few babies along the way. But um, please guys, leave any questions you have. Tell me about what's going on with you. It's been a while since I did one of these and I'd love to get out as many as possible. But the schedule is just really getting busy for me right now. But I'm having a good time still. So we'll see you all in the next one. Leave a comment if you have. And uh, until then, everyone take care.